Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody, wherever you join us from. Thank y'all for stopping by again to the live stream. Shout out to the MTZ crew, Michael Beach of Life. I see you on here. I know Jacob Tanja is probably here too. There he is. Uh, we always have a title, a topic, but I do want to say thank you to my old heads. There's Doubtful Genius. Roger Walker, Alan Johnson. Thank you to all my members. By the way, I haven't forgotten you. We are all, we're all gonna have a members only live stream. What's up, Jeffrey Chatter? Good to see you, man. Glad y'all got back okay. Hey, I apologize. Hey, what's up, W Secrets of Success? I don't know if y'all even heard any of that, but because I'm, I'm using the Wi-Fi here, it's pretty good. But I don't know why I messed up. Shout out to the NTZ crew. Shout out to my old heads. Any new viewers watching us today, welcome. And also people catching us on replay. He said, Cal, you appear relaxed. I am, man. He said, let's go. Alan said, I, I don't know what's going on, man, with this Wi-Fi. Honestly. There's Robert Dane, the ZPD in the house. Cisco, yeah. We always have a topic. Today's topic is life is good in the Philippines for this American. No matter what people say. What's up, Eric? The peso is 56.03. We're going to be heading toward, we weren't going to go back home in the morning, but we said, no, we're just going to stay out. We're going to head toward Payne Lyle Hall for a couple of days. So if anybody's in Payne Lyle, give me a shout out. What's up, Sam McCall? But yeah, life is good, man. I'm just relaxing over here. I didn't make a video yesterday. We were just chilling out, man. But I did go to the SM, man, and, and got sick, man. Well, not really sick, but I got diarrhea, man. The first time it's ever happened to me. I mean, the minute after I get finished eating, I get up from this place. I'm not going to say the name. I don't want to think I'm putting them down. But we get to the national bookstore, I buy some ink pens and stuff. And then we're standing in line at the cash register and my stomach got the bubbling, man. I had to get me a taxi and get home. What's up, Marlon? Thanks for joining us. But yeah, we're in Cebu, man. I love it here in Cebu. I'm not a city man anymore, but I could I could live here in Cebu without the traffic and congestion. I, I found a way around that, but honestly, we're really on a regular day, we're probably five or six minutes from Ayala. But now it takes like 19 minutes. What's up, Abel's Journey? Golden Gate, all of y'all. You know, my video today, I was saying, you know, after 15 years, you know, next month will be 15 years. I'd still choose the Philippines. You know, I don't have any regrets about coming here. And, you know, it's kind of going to lead into what I'm going to talk about today, because when you travel to different places, especially when you really go overseas and you see how other people live on the other side of the planet, it just makes you appreciate your life even more. You know, it makes me appreciate where I came from, America, even more. Y'all see me uh, criticizing the Matrix and everything, but 
that's my right. I mean, that doesn't mean I'm unpatriotic. It just means that I can demand better if I want to. But it really makes me appreciate that because I had nothing to do with it. I had no say so in the matter. The wheel of life stopped and let me off in Louisville, Kentucky, actually Lexington, Kentucky, to George and Nancy Roach. But it makes you appreciate it, guys. I'm telling you, why. If I were you, I travel, man. I travel somewhere because we take our, our upbringing for granted. You know, I always say I was poor under American standards. But anywhere else, man, there's nothing poor about that. We ate every damn day. You know, we didn't own our house. When my father left, we lost our house because he, he sold the damn thing on a promissory note and never got the money. But we've never been homeless. We've always had something to eat and everything like that. So being poor in America is like middle class everywhere else. Hey, Jerome, he says, I forgot. I live in Hilo. Is it Hilo, Hawaii? And I'm on SSDI and I want to know if I can make it on $1,000 a month. That's a great question. You should probably ask yourself that. Somebody sent me a link that said, hey, you know, you've seen the last latest video by Filipino P. She said, don't come over here unless you have 1500 to 2000 And I'm like, well, you should ask her, how was she able to live her, her entire life up into YouTube on far less than that, her and her family? I would never say that, guys. You know, you have to come over here and see for yourself because $1,000 per month with the the exchange rate being 56.03 pesos. That's 56,000 pesos. If you can live in Hawaii, man, which you probably getting, if you only have a thousand, you're probably getting um, some type of subsidy for your rent, probably food stamps, I would say. But if you can live in Hawaii, you certainly can live here. It's just some choices you have to make, some uh, sacrifices, but Certainly you can. Certainly you can. Because, okay, this condominium here, this is if you want to live in the heart of the city in 17,000, including everything, utilities and all, you're looking at 17,000 and that's it. Pesos, which, you know, at the rate, that's not even $300. So now you worry about your immigration and your food. And then, of course, uh, you got to talk about your lifestyle. Are you going to be single? Are you going to be have a living partner? These are things you got to uh, consider. But to say that I would never say you couldn't do it. Because there's people over here doing it on far less. And it depends on where you live, how you live. If you live in the province, man, I'm telling you now, you could do it easily. But um, I, I'm not going to, I did a video a long time ago saying that that's the hardest question in the, that's the, probably the only question I can't answer is how much money I'm going to need. Because I don't know you. I don't know your lifestyle. I don't know where you go. I don't know what you like to do. Who you hang with. You know, because everybody's got some type of habits going on. But I wouldn't let it stop me from trying. That's for sure. Because you don't have nothing to lose. You got everything to gain. Okay, if you, if you can't make it over here. What time is the travel? She Cal was looking at Rabuti's channel. She moved to Sikiwa Island. Her beach house was 7,000 pesos. Wow. Yeah, you can get that over here. I had one for 20,000. But I'm never going to sit here and tell somebody, oh, you can't live on a thousand. Don't come over here. Because I don't like when people do that. You know, you know, everybody has an opinion, though. That's why I told him about her video. I haven't watched it. But if that's what she said, that's her opinion. You know, let her have that. I'm not going to 
knock anybody's perspective, but it's strange coming from a Filipino citizen who she knows for a fact she's lived on way less than that before she became famous. But yeah, there's a beach house right now that I, it, it's not really a house. It's one room, it's a studio. They want 12,500. I don't know if it's still available, but it's right on the beach. Just maybe, I'd say a hundred meters or so from where we used to rent from. He said, no food stamps, but I have section eight, my rent's 583. Passport X says, I, re I recommend everyone become Remember Sunshine Shoulders, he's the best channel I came across talking truthfully about the Philippines. Well, thank you, man. I really appreciate that. Because all I try to do is give you my boots on the ground experience. That's it. Yeah, I throw in my perspective. I throw in my opinion. But I'm just a regular guy over here showing you that you can uh, succeed over here just like I did. I don't have any type of special powers or, or anything like that. But there's a lot going on over here. He said, what's the weather like in August? Does it rain a lot? Well, it's, it's the rainy season. They would consider that the rainy season. Depending on where you are. Remember, guys, there is no one Philippines. It's spread out. It's just an archipelago. So where we are, we don't get a whole lot of rain like up here, uh, like in Luzon. If you go to Luzon during rainy season, Bico region, different places. Yeah, you're going to get a lot of rain. It just depends on where you are, but that is the rainy season. The temperatures tend to be cooler from August to February. It's March now, and it's heating up. It's, it's getting ready to be summer here. But yeah, you're going to get cooler temperatures, Corey Feldman. He said, please remember to press the thumbs up button. You know, like and subscribe, guys. I mean, that's how you support my channel. More people can see my videos and see my channel because there's people, believe it or not, I've been on here for three, over three years, and people are still saying, hey, I'm glad I found your channel. I'm like, wow, really? After three and a half years? He said, I visited a longer pole in Subic Bay. Yeah, it's a whole different story now. But the people haven't changed. Annalise said, please like and subscribe. Thank you. He said, I want a girl with extensions in her hair, bamboo earrings, at least two pairs. Yeah, you can, you can get that here. <laughs> That's another thing. It's just, you know, the eye candy here is endless. You know, for anybody interested in that. <laughs> He said, Cal, keep it down. Merlin's trying to rest. Yeah, but hell, she's been up already, cooked breakfast. She's just relaxing. Like I told her, hold on, man. Uh, we're on vacation. She said, do we got anything planned today? I'm like, yeah, we got no plans. <laughs> hey, Albert, he said, you're one of the best old favorites and always on point. Hey, thanks for your support, man. I really appreciate it. He says, the longer pole is blended in to the scenery, basically. I really, we really enjoyed uh, Angeles City, and we're going back. I'm not going to lie. We're going back. He said, you the man, Shane. Hey, thank you, brother. He said, have a sweet two cow. He said, I love the Hong Kong picture behind you. Man, is that Hong Kong? I didn't know where that was. I thought that was downtown Cebu. Uh, Cisco. But let's get into the the subject today. And I'm just going to talk about some things that you know, life is good over here man, for me. You hear a lot of people, you know, they, they've got their own opinion of the Philippines. And some people, you know, put it down. Some people, you know, hype it up. And then some people are just right there in the middle. I'm closer to the hyping it up part, really, because 
it's been that in a bag of chips for me. You know, it, it just fit me like a glove. Like, why go anywhere else? I'm at a stage in my life right now, I'm 60 years old. If it ain't broke, I already know not to break it. You know, it's like, well, why do I even look around anywhere else? Only because I can. You know. Hey, thank you. Confident Voice Speaks for your membership. This brother, man, um, is over in Singapore. He's a U.S. Co contractor. Living a good life, man. You know, he can pop in the Philippines anytime he wants. He may be in the Philippines now. I know you had the salmon over here up by Alongapo and all that. But this is a cool guy. He's a real, he's the real deal. Uh, when I had the meet and greet up in Angeli City, he bought me this plaque, man, for cooks in the Navy. And it's that type of stuff, man, that that means a lot to me. The thoughtfulness, man, you know, whenever somebody thinks to do anything like that, man, you know what it takes. When somebody sends me a valley buying box or anything. When I met the guy in Angeles City in the hotel lobby, he gave me a thousand pesos in my hand. He said, use this for your spin wheel tonight. That's the kind of stuff, man, that, that I think uh, separates my channel from a lot of these other channels, man. But thank y'all so much. Let me see something. I'm missing something. Okay. What's up, Don? That's my homeboy, man, but he don't live in Louisville anymore. Welcome, man, to the Sunshine Shoulders community. I think you're in Dallas, Texas, right? I mean, he's really from my hometown. He, he knows where I live. Okay, he said, I left Subic about a week ago. I was there for three weeks. Yeah. Uh, w Secret Success said, you said Brazil was calling your name for one last time. You sure about the Philippines? I'm just saying that if I was to leave here, that's where I would go. It's on my bucket list. I'm going. I had such a great time in Rio, not just Brazil. It specifically has to be Rio de Janeiro because that's the only place I've been over there. And it's coming, W Secrets of Success. I'm going to dedicate my first vlog to you from over there. It's coming, man. But really... One thing that stands out when you come over here and you stay for any considerable period of time, this is what you're going to say. My life is not as bad as I thought it was in my country. After a while, you know, you're going to have a new appreciation from where you come from. You're like, what am I complaining about? Okay. And then after even uh, a longer while, you're going to be able to wave the two up like I did today and like I do all the time. And you'll see the things you like about here and what you like about your home country. Because 15 years is a long time, man. There's so many places that you could choose besides the Philippines. I could. Because I don't care where I go, man. I'm going to make, I'm going to fit in. I'm a grunt, man. You could put me in Paris, France in the morning and I wouldn't skip a beat, man. This is how I am. I'm adaptable. And when you come to a place like the Philippines and you become adaptable, man, you be like, I'm not going anywhere. I'm, I'm, my roots is firmly planted. I never would have built a house here if I wasn't 100% sure. Even if my daughter's here, I was 100% sure. He said, Christ the Redeemer is in Brazil. I rode past that at night, man. And I mean, it's just like an unreal uh, scene. I mean, something right out of a James Bond movie. Even um, Sugarloaf Mountain. When I came back and I showed, I was in Cincinnati. I only had a few pictures. Remember, I was drinking and getting high in Brazil. And you talking about some powerful drugs and alcohol over there because it was cheap. I only had three or four pictures. But one was of Sugarloaf Mountain. And I showed my buddy, and I'd be down maybe two or three days later, we're sitting in his apartment, and we're watching a James Bond movie. He's like, man, that
that's where you were. Because I'm gonna tell you, I had a here's what I had a picture of. Because I was I was bliggity over there. I'm talking about I spent all my money in the first night we got there. All of it, whatever I had. But I had a picture of a stop sign, I had a picture of Sugarloaf Mountain, a picture of a taxi cab, and then a selfie before they even called it a selfie. But hell, it was this close to my face. I mean, I was tore up over there, man. And cocaine over there was $5 a gram. But this is really before I got into cocaine. It freaked me out, man, because these guys, they were from New York. They knew about cocaine. I didn't. And so they bought some cocaine, gave it to me, man. I freaked out. I couldn't sleep. We ended up having to leave the hotel. We walking around, but the weed, man, gunner is what we call it. You know, thunder. You know all the names y'all got for weed. What's up, Jay Shabazz? What's up, Rashad? There's moments we miss. He said, Cal, don't get yourself in trouble with Maryland trying to relive an old dream. In Brazil, boy, that would be one thing. I'm gonna tell you, I just got something for Latino women and Asian women because you, when you go out, and remember, I was only like, let's see, that was 1983. So I was a 20 year old sailor, not too long out of the state of Kentucky, and they take me to Brazil, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. We're sitting on one of them little outdoor cafes on along that Copa Cabana, excuse me, beach stretch. And women are walking by in fishnet bikinis. I'm talking about real fishnet bikinis, leaving nothing to the imagination. Some of the most beautiful women you'll ever see. So, yeah, it would be a challenge. I have to go over there with some imp with, with, imp with an empty sack. Otherwise, yeah, I would be tempted. Because I'm a man. Well, you know, everybody's got their preference, man. You know, you, you got to come over here before you say that. My buddy Kaz, he, he he said, man, I forgot my sunglasses. He's with his girlfriend up in Manila. He said, some stunners out today. I said, like, yeah, I'm in Cebu. Okay, tell me about it. <laughs> He said, that phone's going to fly off the ship. He said, Cal, you wild Merlin's going to whoop you. Now, Merlin knows she got me, man. I'm whipped in a good way. He said, man, I'm with that in, in, in Rio, man. I'm telling you, man. I'm glad somebody's on here that can uh, bear witness to what I'm saying. Because people think I'll just be yapping on her. Like, I'll be, I'll be making up stuff, man. I'm not. I'm telling you, man, I got a big old bag of weed. Well, they didn't sell it to you in plastic bags. Here's how they sold it to you in a newspaper. Because I'm like, what the hell is this? Guy brings back a newspaper. You unroll that damn newspaper, and that red and gold is glittery, man. I mean, shiny. Man, because, you know, before we pulled in the port, we had like a seminar, you know, where they tell you, hey, you know, the drugs over here. 10 times stronger than what you're used to. You know, you can't use drugs in, in, in this is in the early 80s when they really start clamping down, but they wanted to warn you. They wanted to warn you about the weather, but you know, we didn't listen, man. They were carrying guys back on the ship and on stretches, man, where they get drunk and go to sleep on, on the beach. And it's the first time I seen people blister up the way they did. I mean, man, we had we were only there five days and four nights. Our ship spent 20 million US dollars over there. It was crazy, man. If you've never been to Rio, go there first before you come here. Because you might not make it over to Rio if you come here first. Because I'm going to tell you, there's something going on over there in Rio. It's just as beautiful, man. And, you know, when I was there, they called me Muhammad Ali, believe it or not.
He said that they give you a breakfast with the rope. Now this is a this is a condominium, Robert. This is um this is Airbnb. Cisco said, cool your cow, the good can of whip. My wife got me like that too. Yeah. You know, I'm not whipped. She don't control me with that thing. But it's just so good, and I can have it any kind of way I want, anytime I want it. Okay, that kind of whipped. And that's what happened to you over here. Okay, they don't know enough about controlling you with it, but they do know how to whip you, but not how they don't control you like over there. They don't negotiate. Okay, all that's non negotiable over here. That just goes along with the program. Cisco International, I think you know what I'm talking about. He said, man up on these hoes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but what do you mean? You know, like I said, man, my father always taught me to be suave and to be, you know, persuasive. He, you know, to, to be the smooth operator, man. All this old, this new generation, man. Y'all, that's why y'all don't have any women. Man up on these hoes. Yeah, and they're gonna run from you. Uh, when you sleep, they're gonna set your damn bed on fire. You guys are too tough, man. To be honest with you. He said... <laughs> We have the same sickness that Eric Benet suffers from. It's called Coochie. Coochie Hola Syndrome. Holy Syndrome. Man, it's over here, man. They're going to get you. That's their power, man. You know, that's the only thing. I met a guy, by the way, by the name of Eric from New York. I met him. He recognized me in Ayala Mall. And he had looked like he had like a little yummy 21 or 22 with him. And I'm like, wow, you know, we come over here. That's what's going to happen to you. And, she, you know, I could look at her. She's trying, you know, she's looking at her phone, trying to look innocent. Lady, you're not innocent. I, I know you. I know it like that. Yeah, he said, man up in America if you can. Yeah, you may need that there. But here, you know, you got to try some kind of tenderness. Try that. What, what is the song about? Who, who sung that song? Was that Sam Cook? Try a little tenderness. It goes a whole lot further, man, than that tough guy stuff. Yeah, you know, women like those, you know, bad boys, but I don't think they like getting slapped around. Yeah, yeah, 20 million in five days, four years ago. He said the sellers weren't the only one buying that white horse. Sounds like the U.S. government made a purchase. Man, would you remember now we're... I'm on a carrier, 6,000 men. It was wild, man. But we had to pick, when you're on a carrier, and anybody can vouch for this, you can only go into certain port of calls because it's just so many, too many people to plop down there all at once. Because we've towed up places, man. You know, when you're in the, you got Marines on there and Navy. We may have been out to sea 70 days, and then you come in there. They were... They were shipping women in from all over South America to make sure there was enough putty there for us. I'm talking about women from Uruguay, Paraguay, Colombia, as far away as, as Colombia is from Brazil because they wanted that money. I met a, uh, I was with a school teacher. And, you know, she's normally a school teacher, but she said when she heard we were coming to town, to port, she took some time out to make that money. She said, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna earn more money in these next four days than I will the whole year. Listen to me, man. People aren't getting paid that much over that. Even today. Mike Dawson Bill said, What's going on? Everybody, we just got back from Atlanta and it's been a long drive. Yeah, if you're going to Florida. Yeah, Otis Redding, I mean. He said, yo, 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 Chad, hope, hope y'all having a good weekend. Hey, thanks, TJ. Yeah, yeah, Otis Red, and I'm sorry. I said Sam Cook. But that's what you need to try. It works over here. It works over here. 
because a lot of guys over here, they're macho, man, you know. What's up, Chaz? He said, the women are manning up in America. A man's going to have competition with that, a lot of linebackers. Yeah, um, like I said, I don't think you want to deal with um, all that tough guy stuff, man. You don't want to bring that over here, but these are guys, man, they're young. You know, they think that's what it takes to attract a woman. It might be, but to keep up, no. But anyway, my life's not as bad. You know, when you get over here and you see how people are really working hard, they're really struggling, and you say, well, what am I complaining about? But let's just go some of the Let's go down the list of some stuff. And I, they're in no particular order. But what I like is, you know, people leave you alone to enjoy your retirement or your vacation. There's not always somebody up in your face over here. Okay. That's what I really like. And this is every single day. Yeah, if you're in Cebu, like, trust me, man, I've been in Cebu. I don't even know since Thursday. I don't think no one's ever came up to me and even asked me for any money since I've been here. Now, they will, okay? Because one thing I'm going to tell you, once you get to Cebu or Manila or wherever it is, get out of the taxi. Get out of the jeep or whatever. Start walking around. And then you're going to see the Philippines up close, especially if you're in Manila. Walk down that Rojas Boulevard. Things slow down a whole lot, man. You're going to see a whole lot of stuff that you're missing in that car, on that motorcycle. Get off that, man. Just, you know, for one day, just say, okay, I'm going to walk around. You know, don't do it at 12 midnight. But walk around, man. Get to see the country. I'm telling you, man, I've walked up and down that national highway from St. Carl City to Dumaguete. And it was things I saw up close that I never saw on that bus. You recognize so many things. And if you're here to train, you're trying to meet a woman, man, go out walking. That's how you're going to meet them. You're going to meet them on that motorcycle. Uh, he said, Frank Perdue tried singing that song on one of his commercials in the 70s. Sounded horrible. Yeah, you, you can have them. Absolutely. But yeah, guys, you know, people leave me alone over here. I, I put that down here. And that means a lot to me, man, because I, you know, you're in a foreign country. You don't know who's who. You kind of apprehensive. And like I said on my video today, after 15 years, people are nice to me because they're just nice. They're not trying to get anything out of me, not after this long. He said, walk by the Mandarin Hotel. They will follow you until you give it up. Yeah, that. I mean, you're right, but I'm just saying, yeah, you're going to run into those bajows and stuff like that. But for the most part, people don't bother you. Okay, I like this. It's peaceful over here. Y'all know where I live now. We're, we're in the condominium. With the main street is right out here, Duterte Street. So you hear a lot of cars and stuff, okay? Uh, but for the most part, man, it's peaceful over here in the Philippines. Hey, I need travel. Thanks for that super chase. Are women okay taking an SDT test before intimacy? Yeah, I mean, why wouldn't they be? The problem is, are you going to be okay with it? Are you going to put your foot down and require it? Because, you know, we say that stuff when we're over there. Maybe she, maybe you can send her the money to do it when you're not here because maybe it embarrasses her. Because I know a guy who does that. He spends hundreds of dollars on women, whether he comes over here or not. And he sends them to the doctor. I mean, he spends hundreds of dollars. But he got kind of creepy on me, so I blocked him. Okay, because he's sending me 
He's sending the results to me. And I'm like, what I don't know won't hurt me, man. Stop sending me the stuff about women that I may end up seeing or something. I don't want to know the stuff about these women, you know. Confident Boy speaks says, I saw some vloggers around Ayala myself the last time I was there, but I think they passed on asking me for an interview. I have that RDF resting douchebag face. Yeah, they're going to pounce on you, man. And, you know, I'm asking you guys to do this. Okay, I'm not knocking anybody for their content, their channel, anything. I'm just saying this to the viewers and to the bloggers. Y'all got to start paying these people for their time, okay? Because as a interviewee, we're not doing you any favors by putting you in front of the camera, but you're doing us a favor because we're going to get paid. Okay, it's only fair that we buy you lunch. I don't even do interviews anymore unless somebody asks me because really people aren't that interested for real. When they know that the, the camera's rolling, they clam up, it's very few people like John that you run into. I knew John for a long time before he got in front of the camera. But just to try to stop people in the mall, it's like a hit and miss. But at least, you know, if I had a person lunch, even, okay, if I'm in San Carlos City and I say, okay, remember those interviews I do with the regular people? I give them 200 pesos. Why not? I, I'm going to reward them for their time, man. You know, time is valuable. So, yeah, just think about that. And then when they know that you're going to charge, they're not going to they're going to be hesitant to confront you. They're going to be real hesitant. Michael Beach, your life says you're never too far from a fresh microfiber town. So, boo. Yeah, if you, if you know, you know, that's right. Well, that's the new, I saw him, I'm in the, um, we're in the grab yesterday, Mike, and that's the new game plan. They just don't come up to you anymore. Now they got the tiles. And they actually been doing that for a long time, but not the vagina. Now they do. You get three, four hundred. But if you're in Peng Lao Bahal, they try, uh, Bahal, I mean, uh, Barakai, they try to charge you more. I'm like, no, nah, it's okay. I know how much these things cost. But I would rather uh, give some money that way when I see somebody out here hustling than somebody just begging me for it. There's Ace Bachelor Cool right there. He's becoming fast, becoming like a celebrity. You see him, those white shades. He's like an Elton John type over here, but he's got some good videos for the new man, the new John, by the way, up in Angeles City. That's why I like Anthony C. You got people like him up there. They know everything up there, man. You ain't got any problems. When you start coming to Cebu, unless you're hanging over there in Ayala Mall, and Manila, you know, the, the, the expats were spread out. And then the further south you go, the less and less we get. But Anthony City, they're there. You already got a built-in support group. But yeah, thanks for stopping by, Ace. Hey, he says, uh, hey, Cal, my grandma told me her formula for living to 107 years old is eliminate stress. Well, that's the reason why I'm still here. My stress level goes way down over here. I mean, really, man, I get a, I have to get a manicure, man. Believe it or not, when I was my own manicure, I used to bite my nails to the quick. And then when they was too low to bite, I'd bite my skin. Now I don't even do it anymore. Hey, thanks for that super chat. A confident voice speaks. I, I know your real name, but I won't say it on here. He said, it's a class thing, brother. People are trying to go about their day. They are. And especially in the Philippines, you're either going some people are either going somewhere or coming from somewhere. Uh, Robert White told me that. He said, Cal, you know, it's hard to meet a woman over here. He said, I'm not afraid to approach him. He said, but what I he was in Manila. I, I met him in Manila on my way to Thailand. He said, but 
what I figured out is they're either going somewhere or they're coming from somewhere. They really don't have a lot of time to talk, you know. But I'm telling you guys, man, the best way to meet a woman, over oh, here's on the dating site, really. If you know what you're doing, that's where you meet them. That's where everybody meets the women. Or you may get fortunate and bump into one at the mall who's got a dating profile, by the way, but you meet her offline. But that's where we meet them. You know, they can let their hair down and everything. You get comfortable with them before they meet you. Then it gets interesting. Oh, okay, sure. Uh, but Tuesday, Mitch, I'm going to send you the link. Send me an email. I'm going to send you a link. He said, I love being a guest on your show. I love to be on again sometime. Yeah, because I want to ask you some questions about retirement. That's that's relevant to a lot of my viewers. He said, TGI Friday's dinner and drinks for an interview. Yeah. I mean, why not? Because I'm gonna tell you something, guys. If y'all don't believe me, look at these blogs, and they're getting thousands, thousands, thousands of views, especially if you like a interesting expat are a beautiful Filipina, the views are going to go way up. They might get three, four, five hundred dollars for that video. And all you're getting is what? That's not your, what, 15 minutes of fame? You don't want it like that. I mean, I'm, I'm talking to the bloggers, man. So having some consideration for people's time. I mean, buy them lunch, buy them a coffee or something. Don't just be sticking that microphone up in my face, asking the same stupid ass questions all the time. You know. He said, I dig your channel. Yeah, he's got an interesting channel. He's smart enough to find a niche over here. See what somebody else isn't doing. People are going to talk about you, man. So what? They're going to make videos about you. It shows you doing something good. Or they'll say, oh, do something else. They'll say, no. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I don't break it. I'm going to do what works for me, man. You know, it's enough. The pie is big enough on YouTube. If you know what you're doing. He said, Angeli City is a, a shit show. Well, if all you're going to do is hang around Walking Street, it is. You, they literally have pussy for sale. They're literally selling pussy on Walking Street. So, of course, it's a shit show because the pussy's what? A half an inch from the booty? So, yeah, it is a shit show if that's what you're there for. If that's all you're there to do is snip up on some woman. You know, I'm going to today, I'm going to my favorite Mexican place today, La Lucha in Mango Square, man. I got to get some of big tacos, Michael, beat your life. He hooked me up to that. TJ said, I got old. I went last for the putas and more for the tacos. The Tagaro in front of Hong Kong Club, not the restaurant, is a legend. Now, what are you talking about, Tijuana? He said, both tacos are amazing. He, Cal, he said, Cal, where the hell is you? I, I really don't. I can't answer that question. Uh, I really can't. I wish I did. I sent him a message the other day, and he sent me back some cryptic message. And I just said, okay, take care. And then his next was, well, I thought you were going to respond with more than that. <laughs> and I'm like, man, I don't understand what you're saying. But he's just... I think he's having some type of problems, man, but he won't talk to me. I, I don't know. Uh, he's right in the same apartment complex with a great guy that I tried to tell him to hook up with. He's an older guy, but, you know, he's really a great guy. But, you know, he won't take my advice. Uh, I, I don't know, man. It's a great question. But I think his run's about getting ready to end. 
He did say he was going back home to reassess. So whatever that means. Sean Dorsey said, besides a passport, what else you need to come to the Philippines? You're talking about just to get in here, you just need that e-travel form. You got to fill that out 72 hours before. But, you know, other than money, just bring, you know, a positive attitude, an open mind. And you're going to have to learn some patience over here. But that's all you need to get in here. It's, like I said, they have one of those most liberal tourist policies in the whole world may be the number one. And it's fairly cheap. I pay about $28 a month to stay here, man. You know, and I, I, it's crazy because when I first started coming over here, it was 18 months. Then somebody told me, man, you know, they doubled that. I didn't believe them. I said, no way. Because 18 months is a long time. He said, yeah, Cal, they call it the long term stay visa now. It's 36 months. And I'd be damned if he wasn't telling the truth. That's a long time, man. You know how much you can get done in three years? I mean, and there's no limit to how many times you can fly in and out of here. Or get on the boat and come in here. Because that's the only way you can get to the Philippines by air and sea. There's no land. But it's very liberal. See, that's what I like. But let's, let's go somewhere. Let's go to this next thing. Did I talk about the simple way of life? And this is what I'm telling guys when you on the dating site. I always say when it says what you're looking for, I always put in that I want a simple woman because they all consider themselves simple. That's really like a compliment. There's nothing complicated about me. You know, I'm simple. It's their, it's their way of telling you that they're uh, well, humble. That's just another word they use. A simple, but it's a simple way of life over here. I could wear this shirt three days in a row, I promise you. As long as I'm clean, I'm not stinking, nobody's ever going to say anything. They might probably think, it's, hey, that's his uniform or something. But that's what I'm talking about. Whether I got a car or not, it doesn't matter to a woman over here. Okay, it doesn't matter whether I got a car or not. Things are real simple. It's not like where I'm from. We complicate any damn thing. And it's always keeping up with the Joneses and all that. Over here, it's a simple way of life. We ate breakfast today. You know, I went to the store. We got our bacon, by the way. And I, they had it all wrapped up waiting. Because that happens very infrequently. That somebody's going to leave 295 pesos worth of bacon behind. That doesn't happen every day in the Philippines. Because that's a lot of money right there. But we got it, man. And Maryland, of course, Maryland cooks the perfect bacon. But we had bacon and eggs and rice today. You know, it was real, real simple like that. You know, probably cost us about 350 pesos all together. And that's really all you can eat. My stomach's full. I'm satisfied. Yeah, hit the like and subscribe, guys. Help me out. Help my channel. Let's move this damn algorithm. You know. Andrew CJ said, if you're on the app, trust me, we dating the same girls. It's fun to compare notes with other foreigners. Yeah, you're, but we're chasing the same women. You're right about that. As long as you stay away from the 10s and 15s, you're going to be okay. Okay, but if, if you bring it down, man, to what we would consider fives and sixes, you're going to be a whole lot, you, you're going to be a lot more successful and you don't have to worry about, oh, she's already been with somebody. But when they're stunners online and they got the bikinis on and on the beach or in a nice condominium or something like that, yeah. But, but he's exactly right about this. Because there's more of us on the dating site than women, believe it or not. You say, Cal, how do you know? Because I looked it up. I researched it. But it doesn't mean anything because 
so few of us are ever going to get on a plane to come over here. When men come over here, we set ourselves apart from the pretenders, man. We're the real deal. When you get on that plane and fly all those miles and all those hours and put up with all that you have to put up with to get over here, you deserve the reward. Hell. Yeah. But when the, the, as long as you stay online, you're right. You're competing with a lot of guys. You get on that plane. You separate yourself immediately. You know, from the shadow. It's what they call it. Oh, he's talking about, yeah, Mexico. Yeah, I don't know where Geechee is. That's a good... You know, I just think that for a lot of people... Our expectations. We're taking this stuff out of context, guys. Are Filipino women nice? Yeah. Are they approachable? Yeah. Are they friendly? Absolutely. Is it fairly easy to meet a woman over here? Yes. But you still got to do some work. They're not just going to lay down, you know, if you know what you're doing, yeah, you can push them like this and they're going to fall back. But you still got to push. These guys come over here and think they're not going to do anything. I mean, Gitchy Land is not a bad looking guy. He's certainly intelligent and he's got that money coming in every month. But why doesn't he have a woman? I, I don't know. You got to ask him. Maybe he's, he only set his sights on that one. I don't know. But even though you don't need a woman to have a good time or a great time over here, W Secrets of Success can vouch for me on that. It makes your time over here a whole lot better, a whole lot easier, and a whole lot nicer to have a woman somewhere around. Okay, you don't, it's not a requirement, but it sure makes things a whole lot better. Okay, I'm just telling you. He said, get the expert liquor out. Give him something, man. Do something for him. Don't just pounce on him. Because we ran into a one the other day. He's trying to uh, he's trying to get us to change the restaurants so he can have a chat with us. I'm like, no, the food is the same down here as it is up there. You know, and I don't knock people for what they do. But this is the tactics like, what, are you going to pay for the damn? You want me to go out of my way to go to this other restaurant just so you can Put the camera in my face and ask me some questions. Hey, thanks for that super chat. He says, are you open to a paid one-on-one -on -one call with people? I do. I, but I only do it to keep people honest. I charge them $30 an hour. Otherwise, they would be all over me. That's just to keep honest people honest. And put my, um, either Michael Beach Alive or Jacob Johnson, put my email on there for him. Thanks for that super chat, by the way. And I just do that to keep honest people honest because, trust me, there's not a day goes by that somebody's got a whole list of stuff. They want me to research for them, okay, that they could easily do. But, yeah, I do do that. I, I don't know. He, he's just really a nice guy, to be honest with you. But, you know, we don't really know people is what I'm trying to really say. So I don't know if I can even help him. He's certainly not open to me helping him, other than the fact that I did help him with that apartment. You know. Thomas T. said, Cal, what happened to Ryan in St. Carlos? I don't know what you're talking about. Ryan? Who's Ryan? He said, LeBron James hit 40,000. Yeah. I know most of you guys don't care, but I'm happy. Yeah, I certainly don't care, man. That kind of stuff just really doesn't, it doesn't move the needle for me anymore. I'm not 11 years old. And at the end of the day, especially nowadays, the NBA is nothing but you just run up and down. The NBA, the quality of the game has gone down, in my opinion. That's why I don't watch it. I don't even watch it during the uh, playoffs anymore because it's just a three-point contest. You know what I've really been watching here lately? 
it's really interests me, man. I, I don't know if it's going to affect me watching the games, but this concussions in the NFL, the CTE stuff, man. I've been watching video after video and players, you know, because we take for granted, man. We see these guys on the field, but I knew this a long time ago because I played football. Somebody's getting hurt on every play. They're really getting hurt. I mean, those tackles and stuff hurt a whole lot more than what we think. And then you get that astroturf, which is down there like playing on concrete. And these guys, man, these players that you know, players that you haven't heard of, and they're already talking about the injuries years on down the line. Once they leave football, it's crazy, man. But I'm not into that basketball. It's just like a three-point contest. That's all. I, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. He said, go truck yourself. Said, just start watching your videos. Learned of you through regular guy. I live in Florida. Thinking of coming over for a few weeks. Where you suggest I go? Well, Angelique City, Sabu. Manila, I mean, what do you like to do? I can easily tell you. If you like the beach, and you know, they got plenty of beaches. But I was flying to Clark, Cebu, and then Manila in that order. But yeah, regular guy, he stayed at the guest house before. Yeah, I have no interest in this. I just don't, man. But what's he talking about? They get rid of him if he's talking crazy like that. Yeah, yeah, he's on the weenie watching system. Yeah. No, I, I didn't. I, I didn't. I don't know. He said, "Hell, when I saw how Mad Geechee got about those pancakes, I knew it was only a matter of time before he reassessed the Philippines." Yeah, but the crazy thing about that was he had already told the people he had a channel. So, of course, they're going to go on and watch his channel, and he tears apart the place. And the first comment under the video is from the people. They said, hey, you should have, you know, if you had any problems, why don't you talk to us? Don't go home. Don't put it in front of the whole damn world. Sammy Davis says, and this is my friend up in Angeles City. See, that's what I'm saying, Kat. You got a built-in support group up there. Sammy Davis has a new club. It's called Showtime, guys. If you're in Angeles City, man, y'all got to start supporting each other. The, the Sunshine Shows community. This guy, his bar is no different than all the rest of the bar. It's not right on Walker Street. But it's a new bar. It's real nice. It's clean. Got nice looking women. The the beer tastes the same. Okay. The music is just as loud. Come on and give him some support. It's called Showtime. But he says if you're sending the girl money, you're not the only one sending it. Be aware that she's going to stay in contact and continue to get money from others while you're here with her. But nobody's going to listen to that. Um. Sammy Davis, that's, the, you know, especially if a guy sending a lot of money like that, it just all depends because when Merlin, when I met Merlin, okay, Merlin was talking to chatting with three people because I know what I'm talking about. I'm not just on here yapping and stuff, guys. I'm telling you, the women you're chatting with, well, she only chat with you. She don't know for a fact if you're coming here or not. She doesn't know you. She has no clue. The more men she chats with, the more likely it is somebody's going to come over here to see her. That's what they're looking for. They're not just looking, unless you're just going to send them money, money, money. Yeah, some women like that, but most of the women you chat with on the dating site, they want you to come over here because that way you're closer to getting them out of here. I've got a woman over here, believe it or not, it's a friend of Maryland. The man will not come to see her. They've been you know, 
online for years. Okay, listen to this. He's afraid to come to the Philippines. So he's, you know, Merle, I say, look, Merle, don't even say that to me. Just saying that to me could be a crime. She says, they're willing to pay somebody, you know, to bring her over there. I'm like, just saying that to me could be a crime. Don't say that to me. Okay. But this is how it is. They, you know, so yeah, they want you to come over here. So be careful because the woman you're dealing with may already have a man over there. But let's get back to this. Merlin was chatting with three guys. The one guy was an Asian American guy. He was Asian. He's a naturalized American citizen. He sent a 50,000 pesos, man. So like right before I met him, that's a lot of money to send a woman because he was coming over here in June. I was already here, but I told Merle I was coming in May. But she stopped chatting with him once. Well, actually, he probably stopped too once he found out because she said, no, nah, I got to let them know that we're together. You know, I don't want them... I'm not going to play that game like that. But yeah, you, you're right. If, especially these young women, guys. Okay, they're not going to give up that bag unless you're giving it up. Okay, unless you're replacing it. Then she's looking and saying, hey, well, hell, John down there in Seattle, he's sending me 20000 a month. And here I am giving you a blowjob every damn day, and he's only giving me 10000 I better hold on to John just in case. I would ride for life, fit for life. He said, when you find your girl, you know. Others just don't compare and only good for a quickie. Yeah, you, this is this is a fact. Because a guy asked me that. Said, how will you know? I said, Cal, you, uh, he said, Cal, how would you know? You will you just know, ladies and gentlemen. This is a true fact right here. It's a knowing, you you'll know. Ron Smith, oh, damn Ron Smith. Confident voice speaks that sometimes us men can get soft. That's why channels and communities like these remind us of our strength. Absolutely. It's very important. Now everybody's talking in terms of a community now. You never heard that until I started that over here anyway, because I saw the, the support group that they had over there. I was listening to somebody the other day. Me and Merlin, you think I'm playing? I'm gonna wake up and answer. It was so bad. He was. It was almost word for word what I was saying, you know, about the support group and you know the community and we need each other and all that. But when I saw how powerful it was in America, and I made a video about it, stop, don't bring your woman, a girlfriend, home. I said we gotta have this same thing over here. Little did I know what I was going to be up against, a uh, confident voice speaks. We don't want help. You can give us the greatest information. And when we get over here, we're going to drop out of sight because they know what they're doing. I got this. I don't need him, you know. And then when something's wrong, something goes wrong, what they do, they come back here. Well, li listen, dude, it, I must have, I've got a photographic memory. Now, if I tell you I don't remember him, I don't remember him, okay? I mean, honestly, I don't. No, 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 they're not trying to pay, they're sending me stuff. They want me to look it up for them. You don't believe me next time I see, because I got this email, I kept it. I said, I want people to see how people take you for granted. Like, dude, all this stuff, you can go easily go on Google and find your damn self. You think I am. What's the average rent in Cebu? You know, just stuff like that. Like, come on, man. Don't do that to me. Yeah, a lot of times it is, it is entertainment and people forget. Are oh, you talking about the NBA? Yeah, it's not entertaining to me, though. It's just a three-point shooting contest. That's all. Yeah, 
He said, please explain the pancake to me. Well, he stayed at Marwani Hotel. You know, when you were staying at TK, I don't know if they had the breakfast buffet. But they don't have pancakes in the breakfast buffet. I don't even think they have pancakes on the menu. Oh, and it pissed him off. And that was just one of the things, you know, he went on and on about the place. Not realizing you're in the Philippines, man. You're not at home. And I try to remind people that all the time. If you keep that in the forefront of your mind, you're not going to complain as much. I'm not at home. I'm in the Philippines. Well, I'm a, that's, you're supposed to have pancakes on the uh, breakfast buffet. Well, they don't. Okay, they don't eat a lot of pancakes over here. Rice cakes, maybe. Pancakes, maybe not. But he had a shit and hemorrhage over there. And the people saw him. He was cutting the place up, up one side and down the other after already inviting them to watch his channel. And they just asked him, hey, sir, if you have a problem uh, with, with our service, you know, kindly come to the, you know, to the counter. Don't put it all the way out there in the world. He said, who likes the UFC? Now, they do have that. They used to have it over here every Friday night, boxing too, at the Waterfront Hotel, not far from here. For 250 pesos, man, you can see good boxing every Friday, but then the pandemic hit. He says, I'm not a dick watcher, man. It's common knowledge. But what are you talking about? I guess he's talking about something stupid, probably. Oh, come on, man. I'm going to get rid of both of y'all for that. So, Tommy, I'm going to get rid of you. You know good well that's not true. He said, Kara's Marwani. Well, it's really called Maria Awani, A-W-A-N-I. But over here, they just cut it to Ma, M-A. So they call it Ma Awani Hotel Restaurant. It's, it's not within walking distance. It, it really is. If you want to walk, it'll probably take you 12 to 15 minute walk. Or you can pay 15 pesos and be there in two or three minutes. But everywhere in that proper, city proper is walking distance. But no, it's not. They don't have their own gym. They do have a swimming pool. It's not that far. Yeah, over pancakes. Yeah, among other things. But remember, you just have to know Geechee Lang. He's Geechee Lang. But it was, it, was, it was other things, too. He said, the best part of Marwani is they will deliver your food and drinks to you pool side. Yeah, they got a nice swimming pool. I mean, you're just in St. Carlos City. It's not Cebu, ladies and gentlemen. And for them to have that nice hotel, to, to me, it's nice. I mean, and then, you know, you got the Palau Hotel. You got the YM Business Hotel. These are like the top three, but then you got a lot more there in this little bitty town. But Marwani is really like the centerpiece because it has that swimming pool. The, you know, I like it, man. I, I like the food. It's really good because um, they've got the same cook. Yeah, yeah, he's burnt now. Yeah, good. Thank you, Michael. Beat your life. He said, you get there and you find his shoes, what they call slippers under the chair and two dirty plates in the sink. San Miguel in the fridge and she said she don't drink. Yeah. You know, I'm going to do a video on the risk and rewards of dating younger women over here. And the risk, you know, I don't know if the rewards, I can say the rewards probably outweigh the risk. But there are some risks. And the risk one of the risks that really stands out is more than likely if, if you're not here to watch her 24 hours a day, she's probably going to have a Filipino boyfriend. Okay, if she's young like that. 
you know, because they hot, man. Some some of these young girls over there, they're hot, man. They need, you know, they need that itch scratch. And, you know, these long distance relationships, we're too old for that, first of all. You're too old for that, man. Don't do it. If you do it, okay, then something, if you you got to suffer the consequences. I'm telling you, it's not worth it. But you know, y'all y'all don't listen. Right, he says, how about you visitors stop trying to cater to your American standards and learn, absorb, and live the life of the hosting beautiful nation of paradise there's the Philippines. Y'all real funny. I can say this till I'm blue in the face. They're not going to do it because it takes some time to, to do that. Especially a lot of guys, this is their first time traveling overseas. So they come to the Philippines and now all of a sudden it's supposed to be America. Uh, wherever it is. No, it's the Philippines and that's, and that's all it is. That's good enough for me. But it takes a while. But hell, after a while, you got to be like, well, damn, man, go back home if that's what you're looking for. Some damn pancakes. Go to Angeli City or Tabu, Manila. You know, they got pancake house. They got plenty good pancakes. But I'm not going to explode on some damn body because they don't have any pancakes. I don't know. Hey, Frankie Stan, thanks for that. Super sticker. Uh, he says 99% of them under 22 are poor and hustling their tight bodies for pesos. They would drain your balls and wallets. Yeah, you know, but remember, guys, we got, let, let's walk in the mile. Let's walk a mile in somebody else's shoes for a moment. Okay. And then, there has to be a demand for it. If it was no demand, it takes two to tango. I'm not going to knock it. I'm not going to talk down on somebody because who are you to talk down when you're over here busting their panties? Okay, this is what I'm talking about, guys. You know, you're no better off for coming over here than her for letting you you know, sample her treasures, but you're no better off. You know, you're poor too. We're poor too in, in a certain aspect. M maybe not money over here, but, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to talk about women like that. It is what it is. It's, it's, it is what it is. So we know the game being played over here, but I'm not going to put anybody down to play the game. Just play it. I don't care, you know, because there's a reason I'm over here when it comes to women. I'm not going to get that level of care. I'm not even going to get that standard of beauty at my age where I come from. I can be honest about it. You know, but, but the guys get over here and they act like, oh, I get women anywhere I go. Well, why are you all the way over here in Southeast Asia? Okay, and then you got to sacrifice all that we have to sacrifice to live comfortable and live good over here. Why would you do that if where you're at now is so good and you got it so great and you're all that at home? I mean, it doesn't make sense to me. But no, I'm not going to. Hell, everybody's poor over here just about. I was watching the documentary last night where two thirds of the people is. According to this documentary, free documentary, it's earning less than two dollars a day. I mean, who, who's not poor over here? Everybody on that dating site is poor. That's why they're on that dating site. But I'm not going to knock them for that because you're probably going to do the same thing if you were in that situation, but you really can't say. It just is what it is, guys. I'm not going to knock it. I'm not going to burn this game up because I enjoy playing it. But everybody comes over here just like that guy Mike just said. We bring these American standards over here. We want to fuck it up for everybody else, man. You know, we're so damn high and mighty. And sit down with that stuff, man.
Yeah, well, we are speak, I'm speaking truth. You know, and then it, it just depends on if the man has got it so good, why would he wrap his experience down to satisfy anybody? He's just really telling you his experience. I really don't see the dream being, since you guys have thought pushing back on that dream, I haven't been seeing it preached as much. Okay, but it's like good over here. In my opinion, you damn right it is. I don't care what nobody says, but I've been over here long enough to know it's good. You can't come over here for two weeks and then determine, oh, it's good or not. It takes at least five years, man, to really let things sink in. But it is a true telling community. I mean, you know, we're still on planet Earth, number one. Okay. These women still bleed once a month. Okay. If that's all you're going to worry about is women. But the weather is good. The affordability is true. That's true over here. You're going to save money. If you're coming from America, the minute you get off the plane, it's like them handing you a check. Because this still is a place that has $200 rent. Depending on where you go, we were looking at a place before we bought, before we built our house. They only wanted 5,000 pesos per month for the apartment. We were renting a house in San Carlos City for 7,000 pesos. You do the math. What's that, about $120 or something? So all that is true, but people can only tell you what they're experiencing, really, unless they're just straight up lying. Because remember, part of YouTube is, it is entertainment. Yeah, right. I don't do that, man. Yeah, they do. Yeah, he said, poor and beautiful. I love it. That's what I'm saying, guys. You know. Hey, Goby Franklin, thanks for that super sticker. But, you know, I'm going to tell you something. Uh. And he says, whoa, he says, uh, nah, I don't agree. The village and province females want a better life, but it's for all their family, not for greed. What you, who, who said that? Lived in Samar for three months. I love it unconditionally. After them bullshit standards. Yeah, that we're bringing over here. And Eric O, the cabbie, says, Westerners are too quick to judge others. We are weak and arrogant. Yeah, the, the, I don't do it, and I, I wouldn't suggest you do it, because I'm going to tell you, what you may have in money, and you may have a higher standard of living, they've got something, too, because nature is a balancing act, man. They're not going to give you something and not give Filipinos something, or tied something, or Brazilian something, and only just give it to you. It's not true. These people are tough as nails over here. What they endure on a daily basis, you couldn't do it. Why do you think people are always packing up and leaving so quick? And we got it made over here as foreigners. We don't live anywhere near what the typical local does. And we can't handle that. But we want to come over first thing and do is call somebody poor when you're poor in your home country, basically. I mean, you're living paycheck to paycheck. You're in that 60%. Of, now what is it? Two-thirds of Americans? Is living paycheck to paycheck. I would be in there right now at 3000 a month over there. But it's a whole earth. No one says you have to be tied to that hole for the rest of your life. So we, we're explorers, man. We're getting out and exploring the earth and trying to find more friendly accommodations, man. There's nothing wrong with that. But I'd be damned if I found a friendly accommodation, then I'm going to come here and put the people down. I mean, come on, guys. We got to watch that. You might as well stay where you are because that's going to get all real quick. Hey, thanks. Uh, what is Mike Beecher like? He says, 
everything, he said, Daniel closed everything. I think some of them already had wreck man before coming here. Well, that's the truth. That's the truth. This is 100% true. Okay. And it's going to take a while for the Philippines to change people anyway, but these women don't have magic powers. If they did, they'd use them on themselves. They wouldn't use them on you. They use them on themselves to get them out of this some sometimes just unbelievable uh, circumstances. But if you were messed up over there, you're probably going to be messed up over here. Okay. Nobody's selling dreams over here, man. But I, uh, I will say this, that some people are taking what you're saying out of context. They're misinterpreting what you're saying. They are here, oh, Filipinos, they're friendly, they're approachable. You know, they're fairly easy to talk to over here. They'll take that as saying, oh, uh, the Philippines are just a, a big whore house. All I got to do is get off the plane and women going to start taking off their clothes. See, some people, they do, now, does that happen? Absolutely it happens. Or you say, man, they got $200 rent over here. That makes somebody think, oh, I can live over there on a $1,000 or $700, you know. But I, I don't see as much dream sellers anymore. Robert Dane said, instead of asking, can I live on a 1000 They should be asking, can I live paying $200 a month rent instead of $1,000 back home? It's a lot more affordable. But you have to ask yourself, can I live on $1,000 in the Philippines? Once you get here, okay, I'm not going to tell you you can't do it because I'm looking around. I've always lived around the locals. I'm seeing people do it on far less. And they're not just eating dried fish every damn day. But if you're asking me, can I live on $1,000 in the Philippines like I live at home? Now, that's a whole other question. I'm probably saying, no, you probably can't unless you're living in one of them old folks warehouses they got, they got us in over there. Hey, King Arthur, thanks for that super chat. He said, I renewed my passport on February 15th. I get on February 28th. And got my taxes done after my two medical appointments next month. I'm out of here. Come on, man. Come on over here. But that should be the question. I think this is what people are asking us when they say, can I live on a thousand? Can I live the lifestyle I'm living now in the Philippines on a thousand? Probably not. Okay. But can you live? A, that's a good question. I wouldn't tell you. Now, I, I would say come over and try what do you have to lose from trying? Nothing. But you got everything to gain. Well, what if you find out you can? I will tell you this. Your living expenses, living expenses, rent, utilities, immigration, it's going to, and food. If you can do that on less than a thousand, way less. Ask Michael Beach of Life what he's doing right now. 7,000 a month rent. He's got immigration fees. He's got electric. He's got water. I think he said something like three or less than 250. But now you got to put on your lifestyle. You got to put food in your lifestyle on there. Hey, happy man, 6920. Thanks for that super chat. He said, thank you, Shannon, and everyone else for all this info. I write down all relevant topics we discuss. And it is it's something that that you can pull out of your Rolodex if you need it. We come over here. He's like, well, what, what did Calvin say? Did he say when I check in the hotel to rest for a day or two? You know, you don't have to do it, but it sure helps. Oh, uh, once I get settled in, why don't I take a walk around my neighborhood? Not at 12 midnight. Because I'm going to see a whole lot more than on that back of that motorcycle or in that tricycle or in a car. You're probably going to meet a, a lot more people, too. Hey, Ranger Rife, thanks for that membership, man. Welcome to the Sunshine Shoulders community. Thank you for your support.
He said in Vegas, rent now is about two thousand a month. Wow. He says, I know I'm just studying biology and I live part time in Thailand. The experts here are well aware of the risk. I've been doing my part to educate them. About what? Because it, it really doesn't matter what you say. People are grown and they're going to do what they want to do. Here's what I've noticed. That when men, men can watch all the videos they want, very few of them, when they come to the Philippines, are you going to see they go underground and that's their you know their right to do that but they're not going to listen to anything you say this is all entertainment to them they don't realize how serious a lot of this information is it can make the difference between you enjoying yourself and having a decent stay over here then it blowing up on you because it blows up on you especially when it comes to the women this is the problem we have the most trouble with that's why we talk about it all the time. But if you don't tell you that all oh, the women are going to be laying down naked and all I got to do is pick up one and take it to my hotel, then you're not listening. Anything else, you tell them, hey, don't send money. Hey, don't get on the dating site. Maybe a week before you're here, you know, only send her some money. Take that one risk. Okay, meet me at the airport in the morning. Here, it's 2,000 pesos, but... If you don't show up, okay, it's 2000 You meet somebody. One guy said he'd been chatting for three years before he finally found a woman. Imagine how much money he sent over here in three years. This is what I'm talking about. This is information that's going to help you. Why in the world would you, unless you're just a lonely fool and you're paying the woman for her time, can I see you chatting with a woman, calling it your girlfriend, calling her your girlfriend, rather? For three years. Remember, Daniel, some of these people are crazy long before they watch my channel. You can't blame bloggers for that stuff, man. You know, they ban houses and lots before they even see the women. So you're going to blame that on us? You know, I'm saying that everything you see people doing over here, watch what people are doing. Don't listen to what they're saying. Look at their lifestyle. Have I talked to you about anything that I'm really not living over here that I haven't experienced? That's when you start getting uh, curious and say, hey, who am I watching? If you don't, if all you see is the green screen behind me, I'm never with a woman. I haven't accumulated anything in the Philippines over all these years I've been talking to you. Would you, why would you take advice from somebody like that? I don't understand it, but that's what we do. And then you get over and fall on your face and you want to blame it on them. Well, you never should have been listening to them in the, in the first place. This is just pure entertainment. You guys haven't accumulated nothing. They haven't done anything, but y'all listening to them. But somebody like me who's boots on the ground, you've watched me over the last three years. Okay, go from that little raggedy house we were renting in Mulabi. Okay, to the next apartment, living there, to building us a house. You were there every step of the way I built my house. You see, I got a woman here, you know, that's basically half my age, that have been over backwards for me. Everything I'm talking about is real. It's nothing I'm making up. Okay. But it's not enough. No way I'll be listening to some of these guys. Y'all be like, wait, show me the money. Like, where's the beef? What's all this you talking about? I don't see it in your life. You know, you see it in my life. I'm showing it to you. Okay? That's what I'm telling you. I got a real life channel. I don't know about these other channels. I can't speak for them. But, but that's what you should be doing. You should be looking at these people, not listening to them. Look at them. What are they doing? No, I'm not ignoring. There's, there's hundreds of people on here, Daniel. What makes you so damn important? I'm supposed to answer your questions all the time. See, that's an arrogance. That's a Western arrogance. I got all these people on here. I'm supposed to just get it, stay focused on yours. Who are you? 
Why are you so important? Show us what you, how you living. Come on, I invite you to come on here. Show us how you living. We don't got no time to be listening to you. You living part time over there. Okay. Yeah, three years of chatting. That's all I'm saying. Happy man said, yeah, a lot of topics, conversation. I can Google, but I feel it best to hear from the horse's mouth. That's why Shan's members only live stream so informative. He has time for most questions. That's right. And I would hope that if you're a member of somebody else's channel, that they're doing a members only live stream. It's really like a free consultation. You don't have, okay, right now, 236, excuse me, 236 people watching this. Can you imagine how many comments is over here? I can't keep up with them. Okay, I'm just going back and forth. New comments, had the old comments, them scrolling back up, you know, trying to stay as relevant as I possibly can, but just moving too fast. And I'm not just going to focus and have a conversation with Daniel Close or whoever he is. That's a consultation, man. You want to consult with me, send me an email. But I'm just going to sit here for one hour answering your questions only. You know, I'm the only one on here. Robert Dane said, please explain plan B in detail if you have a moment, it's not clear to me. There is no plan B. Okay, plan B is going to pull away from your original plan. Okay, if that's, okay. Um, that's rule number one in Think and Grow Rich, to have a definite purpose. He calls it a definiteness of purpose. That one thing that you want to do and then focus everything you got on that. See, if you got a plan B, Robert, that means your plan, your original plan is not strong enough. Okay, all you got to do is just, what I do, I don't have a plan B. I just keep starting over. I keep working on my original plan. There's no plan B for me. When you're 8,000 miles from, from home, is there an emergency plan? Yeah, but that's different than a plan B. Plan B is a whole different plan. No, I don't want that because guess what? Now I'm not focused. I don't have the focus I need for my original plan because I got this to fall back on. I'm not going to take the risk that I need to take on my original plan. I'm not going to do the hard work because I got this plan B over here waiting just in case. You don't want that. Remember the story about the general who took his forces over to the foreign land to fight a much bigger, stronger army. Well, when they made it to shore, guess what? He burned the bridges. Okay, he burned his plan B. He said, we either win or we perish. They won. Okay, you're not going to have the stick to itness that it takes to win if you got this plan B over here distracting you. That's what it's going to be. You can't serve two masters. I'm sorry, man, but there's no plan B. I've never had a plan B. When I found out to get rid of my plan B, I got rid of it. I'm going to win. I'm going to purge. <laughs> there's no in between. I'm just going to keep on starting over, keep on working on my original plan. I don't even call it plan A. It's my original plan. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, Robert, that's what that's what that is. There is no plan B. You got a plan B and you looking at me right now, you throw that damn plan B out. Now emergency plan is different. That's that's to handle emergencies. But you're talking about a whole different plan. He said plan B is a rework plan A. Absolutely. You keep on reworking that. Oh, damn plan B. I'm not picking on you, Robert, because I know why you're asking that. Well, I don't know you, Daniel Close, everything. You said you sent me uh, emails. Well, what's your real name? Yeah, but there is no plan B. We don't do plan B on my channel. He said, Calvin, is YouTube becoming strong? Absolutely not. I love it, man. Look, guys, I'm going to tell y'all something now. 
with these live streams, they do for me what many people don't have. And it gives me a chance to speak my language to people who um, understand me. I had a buddy, Rock Hartman, okay, when Jeffrey Taylor, and Jeffrey Taylor's on here, he can vouch for me. I said, man, what are you doing? Because, you know, Rock lives like maybe an hour from me. And he came down to my house. I said, man, what are you doing here? He said, man, I had to get out of there. All that Tagalog and uh, the long go and everything going around in my head. I needed to speak to somebody in my language, man. And that's what YouTube is. It comes naturally to me, Earl. I'm a conversationalist. You know, I'm just passionate. That's all. But no, it's not stressful. Why would it be? I could cut it off at any time. Yeah, sharpen your plan A. That's all. I don't even call it plan A. Your original plan. Because that's the only thing that's going to keep you going, man. Okay, if you got this plan B that's taking just any of your attention, you need 100% attention for your original plan. I know what I'm talking about, man. You you know, you can't go from the crack house to the penthouse of life with a plan B. Not the type of alcoholic and addict I am. If I know I got a plan B, I'm going to skip on my original plan over here. Like I'll be floating somewhere in between. Moments when Mitch said, people don't have patience for a live stream. The Philippines probably isn't for them. Oh, man, that, that, that's a great point, see? That's a great point. Because at the beginning of this live stream, I said, there's some things you probably going to need to bring over here other than money. An open man, you know, a, a, a positive attitude won't hurt. But certainly you have to learn patience. In the Philippines, somebody bear witness to what I'm saying. We don't wait in lands in America. But we wait in lands over here. I'm talking about long lines. Okay. If I go somewhere and I see there's a line, I'm coming back. But very seldom is there a line in America. We've got self checkout cash registers over there. We don't wait. We don't have any patience over there. Over here, you better have it. You go to get a damn um, marriage license, man. Over here, it might take you one to three months. In America, you can get it done in five minutes if it takes that. My wife, my Filipino wife was shocked. She was, she couldn't believe it. And she said, where are we going? I said, we're going to get the uh, marriage license. We walked right in there. I walked right up to the counter. Nobody else was in there, by the way. Ain't nobody getting married in America. And she says, what are you here for? I'm a marriage license. I gave them, I, I believe I want to say $5. I'm not sure. It wasn't much more than that. And we were out of there. He says, I'm not shocked, though. There are a lot of expats in Bangkok that suffer heavily from main character syndrome. Yeah. It's supposed to just you the main one. I'm focusing on you, nothing else. Right. Get out of here with that. Hey, Cos. Thanks, brother, for showing up today. This is one I told you. He said, I forgot my sunglasses. He said, stunners out here. Because the guy says, Oh, I like Latino women. He said they're 10,000 times, you know, nicer, uh, whatever, finer than. Asian? I said, okay, that's your opinion. I said, but you come over here and say that. Yeah, he said, you haven't seen a line until you go to the field. They stand in line for everything. If they're not standing in line, they're shocked. If they don't see a line, okay, when we go to where we're going to buy a ticket, okay, it's a line. I don't, if they're not in a line, they're shocked. Uh, he said, Shine, it seems as though doing live streams come naturally for you. I could never do it at your level. Well, it takes t practice. I've been doing this for three years, you know, but I'm a conversationalist. I start earning my money in the insurance business. But it's really y'all's live stream. I'm really just reacting to your comments. I mean, that's really all I'm doing. And then I can add in a few of my stories and, you know, whatever my topic is. 
But I think what people do, they sit there and they read it and they can't react. Uh, they can't react quick enough. They can't keep it flowing. You know. But yeah, I've gotten good at it because uh, I practiced on it. And it's my way of giving back. You know, believe it or not, you know, if you go back and you look at these live streams, they're for my viewers and subscribers, really. You get to really interact with me one-on-one. -on -one. You're the reason I'm sitting here right now. You're the reason my channel is the way it is. It's not me. I'm only part of it. You're the main part. And I'll never forget that. But yeah, he said, you still in Zamboanga? No, actually, I'm in a Cebu right now. But see, uh, and see here, here's a dick watcher. Look, look at his profile picture. This is a perfect example of a dick watcher. Everybody, every day one comes up on my live stream, okay? He's nothing but a penis pusher, okay? This is what he is. He, this is all he's got time to do. It's a grown-ass man. He's calling us losers, by the way. Who's the loser? We're minding our own business. You're coming on here. Get rid of this clown. <laughs> Later, buddy. Go on one of them other channels. Okay? Yeah, he's a dick watcher alert. <laughs> And y'all think I'm playing. These guys are actually dick watchers. They really worry about what some other man is doing with his life and his time. That is a dick watcher. <laughs> hey, thanks, man. Alchemist 89. He said, used to be a half to a whole day affair at the DMV in California. Now it's 30 minutes or left. Yeah, we don't wait in line. We do not wait in line over there, but if they don't see a line over here, no, they don't even, they're shocked. He said, I was in Zamboanga last month. Yeah, he said, Calvin, Philippines equals patience. Without it, please go back home. Yeah, you, you're going to go crazy over here. What's up, Jabraz? Without patience, you need it. They're going to sit there and count your money two times or three times at the checkout counter. And you're like, give me that 222 pesos, lady. Can't you add? It says that's the change you get back. It says it right on your computer. They sit there and count it three times. You know, don't let them make a mistake. Oh, my God. Yeah, he's a loser, yeah. He's a dick watcher. He's worried about what other men are doing. Global Vagabond says, are you planning any social events there? Manila in late April, early May. I'd be there for, for a conference. What's that? See, is it a conference? Probably not. My, my next meet and greet is going to be in March, but who knows? With Booby starting school, guys, it really threw a wrench in my plans because we got to be there for booby really they're all they were off thursday and friday that's the reason why we came because believe it or not booby had a damn exam but that's just you know their way of getting you to pay the tuition over here because you can't if you go to a private school not public but private you can't take the exam unless your uh tuition is paid up and if you can't pay it, you can get a um, what they call a promissory note. But Booby actually has a an exam. Crazy, but she does. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like a loser too, right? Those are people, but they're here. 
Yeah, he, he's a, he's a, a penis pusher. You know, he wants he's worried about where your dick is going or where it is. You know, it's a shame, man, that you got grown men like that. Hey, confident boy speaks thanks for the super chat. He said, I don't understand how these guys have so much time to create tons of profiles to troll you, bro. I wish I had that time. I'd be figuring out how to battle my life. Thank you. Somebody sent me a, a link today. Said, hey, don't pay attention to this guy. Somebody, he got in line and made a video about me. Remember when you see videos about me, guy, it's saying that the guy doesn't have content of his own. Oh, he's riding my dick so bad that he's got to make a YouTube channel about me. That's a quintessential dick watcher. He's the dick police. I'm not that important. Okay. But if y'all think I am, if you keep on making videos about me, I don't care. I won't validate his ignorance. You know, he's got one of them weak ass channels, right? He's nothing but a dick watcher. He wants to be sitting here with me instead of punching the clock over there. You know, damn shame. But yeah, he sent me. Uh, yeah, I know. That's the reason why I've been getting a lot of crazy emails, but that's okay. I mean, honestly, guys, these are dick watchers, you know, and they're never going to do anything to me. I, I don't dislike them because they have, I don't know them. These are strangers. If they got that much time, you know, that's homosexual stuff. But, you know, if they have a problem with me, I'm pretty sure they know where to find me. And remember, all my information is on my YouTube. They didn't leak anything. I put it out there anyway. It's like that saying, nobody goes there anymore. It's too crowded with people. Yeah. But when you hear people doing that kind of stuff, talking about other bloggers, you know, I mean, getting personal, it says more about them than it says about the blogger. I mean, if I were you, first of all, I wouldn't watch him, but I challenge them like, man, why is so much of your content about somebody else? What do you got against him? Why are you, I don't need you to save me from Sunshine Children. That's what they're doing. Oh, we're going to expose him, blah, blah, blah. blah, blah. Uh, this and that. Now, who are you to be a truth teller or whatever they call themselves now? You know, grown ass men, by the way. Yeah, yeah, notice me. <laughs> he says, I just got back from the field yesterday. It was very difficult getting back on the plane when I was treated so well. It brings tears to my eyes. Only if I can feel this way in the United States. Yeah, but see, they think I'm lying. It's going to happen to the next man who comes over here. It's true, man. You're going to have such a great time over here. Life is good over here. That when it's time for you to go home, man, you're going to, your tears are going to well up. You're going to be angry. You're going to be like, damn, I got to go back to this bullshit over here. You're going to leave all these palm trees and coconut trees waving in the wind. There's beautiful women walking down the street. The sun shining. And you got to get back on that that tin can and fly back over there, man. It, it, it's not easy, guys. Okay. Yeah, that's right. So you, you, they're just jealous, man. They know where I am. I mean, you know. Uh, that's right. I've, I've been an open book. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Angelo Habib, thanks for that super chat. Say, hey, Cal, I can't wait to visit you and leave my girlfriend behind. I'm <laughs> just kidding. No, you're not. Because I warned you. I said, when they meet you and they got that little plastic bag, it's going to be hard getting rid of them. But, you know, you're the happiest prisoner probably on the planet right now. Yeah, exam at three years old. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. You're right, Hal. 
He said, you're not lying because it's true, man. It is good over here, man. It's something that we're not used to. We get the kind of attention. Let's see as we get older, man. Let's put it like that. Yeah, when we were younger in our young days, we got that type of attention. You know, it's like high school love over here now. You know, Maryland don't do anything without checking with me first. Okay? When's the last time a woman asked you, I mean, literally asked you, let me suck your dick. Like, you want me to suck your dick? When has that happened to you guys? How has it ever happened to you? Okay, it happens all the time over here. Okay, I'm not being nasty. I'm just giving you an example of why guys be crying when they go back home because they know they're not going to get that over there. Okay, women are, on, I mean, go out of their way to look good so you, to keep your attention. Then I, they don't have her and braids pasted in their heads and all this old fake stuff. You know, Jeffrey Taylor said something. He said, and I said, I want you on camera to say this. Because they won't believe me. He says, what? Did you find it? He says, I like the women. He's he been to Thailand. He's been to the Philippines now. He said, I like the women in the Philippines now because they have natural beauty, he said. He said, the women I'm dealing with in Thailand are enhanced. It's enhanced beauty. He said, but the women over here, he said, even a bar girl. <coughs> he says, natural. It's nothing fake about the women over here. He said, what's going on? No, they're just being trolls. He said, bro, it's always sad to leave the Philippines. That place is on a different level. It is. Dolly Mason, Cal, you got great content, new and original, no matter what they try to do, it's not working. So they got to send the dick police. Yeah, that's all it is. They cannot do what me and so many others can do. You know, Organic content is all it is. It's just real content coming from my true feelings, from my true life, from my real life. All they got to do is be more real, but they can't be more real. You're in a damn little BS car making videos or behind a green screen. There's no women around you, but you want to give all this woman advice. I don't get it, guys. If they want to do that, let them do it. I'm over enjoying my best life. Okay? But they know where I am. They don't really have a problem with me. They just don't know how to create a following. That's all. Because if they did, they wouldn't be having the trouble. Do you see successful channels? Have you ever seen Filipino P make a trolling video about somebody? Huh? Dedicate a whole video to talking negatively about somebody else. What about old dog new tricks? What about Mark? What about any of these big... Excuse me, big channels over here. The real channels. They're not going to do it. They don't have to do it. You only see the little boys doing that. The ones who can't get any traction for real. They got their own little um, followers, you know, bunch of uh, dick police. That's their platoon. The penis platoon. That's all it is, guys. He said, the truth with this Geechee hater on the chat is that we roast Geechee in good spirit trying to wake him up to a better life. But these trolls are actually dragging his good name through the dirt. Yeah, you know, but it's not going to work. He said, yeah, sad to fly back to the land of hate. You know all that's over. I had to tip my head to my buddy Cornelius Mack, but he had to go back to handle his business. Because I, I would miss it the minute I went to the airport, Harold, even before my plane left. And I'm seeing people coming to the Philippines. I'm going to break down, you know. But I'm just telling you. Uh, the life I'm living over here, you can't tell me I'm lying. I'm not. You watching me. I don't have any reason. Like, people actually come to my house. That's what I want them to do. I want them to bear witness that I'm not some phony guy, that this is not a green screen behind me. This is real, by the way. Okay? Thomas said, I feel like I'm finally being judged for my character, not my color. That's right. And that's true. 
He says, uh, 241 watching, only 54 likes. Hit the like, thumbs up button, fellas. Yeah, like and subscribe. You know, but half of these are the dick police. They're looking for uh, content. They're looking for something to talk about. Watching another man's dick. He says a Filipino referred the green mango as an apple mango. It's sour and dry. I like the sweet, juicy mangoes I love. Yeah, now, um, now they have a market for them, though. You know, because they, they'll, they'll give you, when they sell you those sour ones, they'll give you the, well, they'll sprinkle soy sauce on them and salt. You remember how we used to eat those sour apples? Same thing. He said, Angelo, how people said the dick police stuff is hilarious. But it's true. When you got grown ass men worrying about what another grown man is doing, he's dick watching. I mean, I don't have a pussy, I got a dick. That's right. They're trying to clip something to take out of context. That's all they do, but I'm not worried about it. Because what I'm gonna do is come up with some more original stuff that I do on a daily basis. Hey, Mithringo, thanks for that super chat. He said, winners don't troll, period. That's right. It goes to show you they're losers, man. You know, when they can't come up with their own original content. Not to the point where they're going to get any views. So they snatch that sunshine shoulders or Filipino P or old dog, put in a title, make you the topic, and boom. Voila. I, I, I fixed my my view count problem. Only thing is, now you look up, you got 100 videos about me. That's a dick watcher. Ain't no maybe, you know. That is some homosexual behavior. I don't have anything against homosexual, but homosexuals like each other, right? I'm a man, so why you want to keep following around my nuts? You know, trying to keep my nuts warm. I got a woman for that. Yeah, they'll just they'll just use they'll just use them to eat because when we travel from you know St. Carlos to Dumaguete and we stop at those little um, you know bus stops or wherever it is, that's one of the things they're selling. They sell it in a little plastic, and then they'll have the soy sauce waiting if you want that. I like the ones that are somewhere in between sweet and sour. They call them Indian mango. And they're good. Moments when men said, Calvin, things have changed so much, you wouldn't recognize it. Make sure you do all your business when you come because you aren't going to want to come back for a long time. I know, man. I'm looking over there now and I'm saying like, Trump is getting ready to win the presidency again. And they're not going to stop him. You know, and I don't care, but I'm just saying, this is what's going on in America. I mean, like, really, guys, I mean, that's, is Trump and Biden the best that we can offer over there? It's really depressing, man. It's like, I don't even look forward to election day anymore like you used to. It used to be like an event. That's like a horror show. Really, man, it, it really is. You're like, wow, what in the world is going on over there? He said, Beach of Life, he said, didn't know pineapples were that nutritious for us. They actually are. And they'll give you, your woman a treat if you eat enough of them. I learned that from a couple, they've got a farm where they raised some pineapples on there. And they said, if a man, you eat pineapples, and the woman was saying it by the way, we're in the car. She says, uh, we're coming back from Robinson or where we were coming from. She said, yeah, you know, that if you eat those pineapples, 
And then when you have sex, she says, the man would taste like uh, pineapple. And the man said, yeah, and she and, and the woman would taste like pineapple. I just took the word for it. Hey, Kevin, thank you. Yeah, we're about ready to get off here. Yeah, it's all they're doing is bringing more people to my channel, but you know, when he was asking me, is YouTube stressful? If I paid attention to that, it probably would be, but I ignore it. I don't validate it. They need a beef with me to build their channel or anybody. So you see they're always reaching for somebody at the top to rattle their cage because otherwise, how are they going to get any attention, guys? But I'm here. I don't run from anybody. I'm not hiding or anything. My real name, my real, you know, but they don't really want that smoke, guys. They just want views. You know, yeah, biter, dick biter. What do they do for training? Did they get a diploma? Yeah. They take a picture of your dick and put their name on it at the bottom. Here's you graduated. Now you're an official dick watcher. Yeah, nobody's going to have a problem. <laughs> yeah, that, that's how they get the. They got to make enough videos about a particular person. Who he's screwing? Is it a man? Does he like lady boy? How old is the woman? Where do you meet her? She's from the province, from the city. They got to compare you with somebody else's woman. Does she got money or not? That's part of their dick exam. And once they pass that, like I said, they'll take a picture of my dick and balls and, you know, stamp their name on it and, and put it in a frame and they'll put it on their wall. They'll dick watch it. Huh? Well, well what's your name was saying something the other day about why Trump's not going to jail? I was listening to uh, Charleston White. He said because Trump, he gets 24-hour Secret Service protection. He's guaranteed that for the rest of his life by being a former uh, president. So that's why he'll never go to jail. But I don't know. I'm just saying, though, here's a guy. Who, now, if that was me, I couldn't even get a car loan let alone work, run for the president of the United States. First of all, I'd be in jail. I'd be on a bond so damn high. He said, yeah, they go to the college. No, no, it's dick. We don't even give them a pass. It's a dick watcher. That's what they are. They officially, they go to the, the damn academy, the dick police academy to become a dick watcher. Then they go on patrol. That's what they do for the rest of their life. Oh, look at the poor man's passport guy. He likes men. He likes the lady boys over. Look at Calvin. You know, look at brother. She's 41, you know, all that, right? He's married already, see? That's how they get their diploma. It is a horrible show, man. You be like, uh... Right. It's really bad, though, when you think about it. He said, why don't they eat yellow mango? They, they do. We eat them all the time. Booby loves them. He said, would a retirement home be a good business in the fields with Americans buy in on retiring in the Philippines? Absolutely. A lot of them are. I mean, we're already got some plans in, in the works for building tiny homes, but what are you talking about a retirement home? Are you talking about like a nursing home? Are you just talking about to have somebody build a retirement home here? Why not spend twenty or 30000 and be done with it? 
instead of and with no mortgage or anything like that. But I would come over here for a while and get my feet wet. I wouldn't do anything within the first two years, really. I wouldn't. King Arthur, thanks for that super chat. to Cal. So these are some of the same guys that try and peep at you while you take a piss in the urinal in a public place. Yeah. These are weirdos, man. When you see people wondering about your sex, sex life, and you know, going behind the scenes, investigating you, they're not police, making videos about you 24 hours a day. You know, just worry about another man. They're a dick watcher, they're the dick police. And I can't give them a pass. That's what they are, they're not haters anymore. Big dog said Martha Stewart is the only billionaire to go to jail. Chunk will get house arrest. No way a rich white man will go to jail. Well, not a rich white former uh, president. He's not going to jail. He, uh, like you said, house arrest. I, I don't believe it. But just the fact that he's still in the running, that the people have not washed their hands of him. This is what makes me suspect about what's going on in America. You know, it's like, don't you see all the stuff that he's done and all the stuff that doesn't that even matter when it comes to uh, a candidate anymore? I guess it doesn't. Yeah, that's right. He said, Calvin cutting up. Got me laughing. And yeah, it's true. I got a woman for that. I don't need a man to be hugging my nut. Uh, Victor Marshall says, so Calvin, give us something good. The attitude is gratitude. What's going down on the positive side of the game? I mean, what, what do you mean? The respect that you receive as a, as a grown man over here. Isn't that? That's good. Right there, that's what I got right here. It says you get respect. You get that celebrity status. You're treated like a man. Something that we don't get over there. You're at the head of the table. You eat first over here. Your feet literally do not touch the ground over here. You better not pick up any fork and try to wash it or plate or wash any clothes or do anything that's not a man's responsibility. See, that's what I like. That's good over here because over where I come from in America, there's blurred lines, okay? And that's that's what they're happy with over there. I, I didn't, it took me a long time to get used to being treated like a man. That, you know, I'm not trying to be some ruler or something like that over people's lives, a controller. But my word has meaning over here. If I say something, you know, maybe they'll take a look at it. They're not just going to bypass it and say, oh, it don't matter. There's, you know, you, you know that debate that we got going on over there? Who eats first, the children or the man? It's no debate over here. I eat first because without me, there's no food. Over there, y'all can stop with that foolishness because... The food stamps is putting the food on the table a lot of cases. A lot of these women is having these discussions. Oh, uh, it's a food stamp, so my kids will eat first. Well, over here there are no food stamps. The man still matters, Victor. So yeah, that's something positive to have. How about having extra money where you can do other things to do over here because of the affordability over here? I didn't say cheap. But it's a whole lot cheaper here than it is where you come from. Isn't that good? Okay. Now you can go scuba diving that you cannot afford. I can't afford over in America. Over here I can. Hell, what is it? To get the, to go to school and get, get everything, the lessons thrown in, everything. I think uh, 18 or 19,000 pesos. What is that, about $300 right now? 
you get the class, you get the certification, you get the lessons, or you actually go into the ocean. Okay, that's pretty damn good. My standard of living over here is higher. Okay. Mike is saying something right here. My quality of life is better because I drink more water over here. I'm getting more sunlight, more vitamin D3, but more vitamin D over here. I can eat fruits all day long if I want to, if I have a desire to. And vegetables. I don't get my chicken out of some frozen food department or my fish. So yeah, life is good over here for me. But I had to do some work. I had to get acclimated. I had to get adapted. And I had to work on me, which is what a lot of people don't want to do. You want to come over here and work on the woman. Put all your time and effort and money and everything on, on the woman. Why would you want to do that? What did you work 40 years for over that for? Just to come over here and throw it all away over a stranger? But yeah, the freedom over here that I have. Well, you know, I, I'm just saying, you know, a lot of, I don't pick on channels, man. You know, if that's what they want to do, Mike, you know, let them do it. I'm just saying, I don't do it. The big channels, we don't have to do it. You know, I don't have anything against the Philippine Annex, really. Because they never really trolled me. I mean, they're trying to find their niche. But I'm talking about people who actually do hateful videos and stuff about you, turn you into the authorities and do all that. Those are dick watchers, man. You know, I mean, knowing that they're cowards, man, they're never going to do that and confront you like that to your face. They'll do it behind the, the cameras. Okay, if that's the type of life you want to live, I'm not living that kind of way. I want to be out here. I want the freedom that I got on here. See, I got freedom on here. You can't be free if you're a troll because you're always watching your back because they're going to troll the wrong person. They're going to make the video about the, the wrong person. And now they're looking on their shoulders like that. Okay. I don't know who this is, but he's not real. Get rid of this guy. I will. He said, Cal, Donald Trump, when I step foot in the White House again, they will make some kind of a deal. You get out of politics and we won't prosecute you. Well, there's only two people left. Him and Biden. Nobody's going to run up against Biden. I mean, Biden's worse than Trump. I mean, my opinion. It's not like we're winning by putting Biden back in there. There has to be two more people. It's, okay, there's 400 million people in America. You're going to tell me that that's the best two that we can come up with? I don't believe it. You can never convince me of that. But that's just the way the, the ball bounces over there. And the people won't push back. We won't demand better. We rather fight each other about that. You know. Oh, 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 Selvin, imagine said my kid graduates next school year. I'll be making my second trip to the Philippines. Yeah, man, come on. Congratulations, by the way. Yeah, the dick police on duty, man. <laughs> one out of 12, one out of 12. Dick police on alert, yeah. They're the dick police, man. DP on duty, protect your booty. No, they don't want the booty either. They want dick. Imagine making videos about another man. You want a dick. You don't want all these women over here, and they want to talk about me, a man. You got to ask them why they're doing it. Because they love dicks. 
He said, do I need to go to the academy to be a dick? You don't want to be a dick bully. That's not something you want. Okay? I'm sorry. Yeah, food stamps. See, that's what I'm saying. That's, that's the only way they can have that argument over there. Who eats first? My kids eat first. When I over here, there ain't no food stamps over here. Yeah, those guys, man, you know, it, it's a shame, man, you know, really, because um, yeah, Biden's worth. Yeah, no selection, just election. Something ain't right. Yeah, you would think that, but it's not, man, trust me. I mean, who, who's gonna we're not, we certainly aren't gonna fight. Black people certainly aren't gonna fight. We know the land. There's a land in the sand over there for black folks. You're not going to do nothing but complain about that if he's back in there. You're not going to fight because it should have been a civil war a long time ago, market focus. Okay, in my humble opinion. All right. Yeah, yeah, shameful. We have no other options. Yeah, it is shameful, man. But we don't want to do anything about it. All we're going to do is argue about it and talk about it. We're not going to do anything about it. But like I said, uh, even though the presidential level is not really concerned with my personal life, you can't even name three people on your uh, city council or your school board or your state senators. You can't name them. Those are the people we should be worried about, but they've got our attention focused on Trump and Biden. Name three city council members. Name three uh, school board council members. You can't do it. Just like you can't name four Supreme Court justices, which are part of that branch, you know, the executive branch, legislative, and then what? What's the other one? Because they got us focused just on the president. He does, he's not, we don't have a dictator there. Yeah, yeah. He should have been gone, man. But see, the damage is already done, though. He set the country back years, decades with the shitty board in there. That's what I'm saying. So, yeah, they can get rid of him, but what's that? That's not going to change anything. Yeah, yeah, judicial. That's the Supreme Court. I, legislative is Senate. Yeah, right. Exactly. Abel Journey said the newly arrived immigrants have already begun to fight police in the U.S. South African immigrants will attack police in mass before Black Americans will fight. Yeah, because we've already the chain is up here now. Re read the book the miseducation of the Negro, and you'll understand why, you know, the change, yeah, they're taking them off our ankles and our um, wrists, but they're up here now. Remember, you're not going to go against your thinking. And Napoleon Hill likens it to this. He said, you're not going to jump in the deep end of the swimming pool if you don't know how to swim. It's the same thing when they start fucking with your subconscious man. You're only going to go so far. Yeah, I'll, I'll do this and I'll do that. But you're not going to act against your thinking. You're not going to storm that damn capital like those fools did over there. And when I when I said that on my live stream, I took it out and made a short out of it. People had a damn fit, but they know I'm telling the truth. Oh, it was black people that, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it might have been one or two light-skinned there were no blacks in there. They, they weren't in mass. Okay, we're not gonna we're not going to rush the capital, and it's not gonna we're not gonna start a civil war. Now we'll kill each other. We will do that because we're not afraid of each other. Ah, oh, here we go. We had this. We had that under Trump. Yeah, and then imagine he wrote that book in the 30s, and it's still relevant to today.
He said his friend lost all his money gambling, shooting dice. He said bought a cloak, which is what preachers wore back in the day. Went to Cincinnati, became a pre preacher, got all his money back, and then went back to gambling. That still happens today. He said be leery of a preacher if he pulls up in a new Cadillac. And he said this in 1933. It's still relevant to this day, guys. You know, that's another way they get us. They get us with, they scare you with the hair on brimstone. So you scared to think for yourself because you think somebody's watching everything you do. Yeah, you watch it. Yeah, we, we, our minds is, is on something else. They got us distracted. That's what the football is for and the basketball. You can name the all-star team, but you can't name four. You can name four starters on the all-star team, but you cannot name four Supreme Court justices without Googling it. You don't know who's on your city council, who's on your school board. You don't know any of that. But you know that the guy got on here and said LeBron James scored 40,000. Good. Who gives a damn? But when I do the question is over in the Philippines, oh, Philippines don't know nothing. I could ask the same level of questions in America, and we wouldn't know. If I went into the regular neighborhood like I do over here and pulled them flashcards out and said, yeah, name me the president of your school board, uh, you know, of your school board, and they wouldn't know it. Well, see, they make federal judges a lifetime. The other judges have to be voted in. Those are the ones who are more controversial. See, the ones who have to be voted in because they can change, you know, so they can get more votes. But the federal people, they can be more, you know, um, what do you mean? They can be more fair because no matter what, they, they're in there for, for help. But it's these ones where you, the ones you're going in front of, that has to be voted in. Those are the ones that, are, man, I'm real skeptical. And I mean it. And you should be skeptical of them too. Hey, thanks, big dog, for that super sticker, man. For all your support, really. I don't be ignoring. I noticed that stuff, man. He said, Global Vagabond, can you name the CEO of any pharmaceutical company? Yeah, a fast food chain. What are you talking about? That's a great point. Yeah, man, you know, we're just talking common sense on here. He said, Cal, the entertainment is such a big deal here. I can have a 55 inch TV delivered to the house for $265. Wow. Yeah, it's a big deal. The distraction is real, Mitch, and you know it. The important things that we should be worried about, you don't even worry about your health over there. We're worried about somebody else's health. Oh, is, is Emmett Smith, he he's going to play tonight? Is it his ankle? What about your damn ankles? Are they, are they good? Can you make it to work in the morning? You know, are you on the damn injured reserve? He said, are you smarter than the little rascals? Yeah, whatever, because trust me, we're no smarter, guys. We're actually, we're probably less smart. But we got some strong-ass Kool-Aid over there. We got the strongest Kool-Aid in the world. He said, I live in Thailand now, I can care less, right? He said, I know there's a lot of talk about pork. Is it possible to eat clean over the field that I have to pick? Absolutely. I mean, but you know, we didn't start talking about pork and all that hell till we got older. And this is something that you gotta come to terms with yourself. We've been eating bacon our whole damn life, pig feet and all that stuff. Now all of a sudden, 
you know, and they'll show you a little line in the Bible that says, uh, well, why did God make the damn pig then? Okay. I mean, I, I tell you what, I'd rather eat something for the pig than smoke a damn Newport. I drink some of that cheap ass uh, wine. Uh, you know, they, they talk about eating a damn pig versus them damn Newport cigarettes is what's killing most of us. That cheap ass Richard's Wild Irish Rose wine and bumpy face and all that. That's what you need to be getting off of. You know, that's that's not what's killing people in America. It's that fentanyl and all that old crazy shit over there in America. They ain't dying on no damn thing. They ain't, they ain't dug somebody back up. Yeah, he had too much pig feet. Yeah, it's a lot of shit. We black men are born with hypertension. We're born with high blood pressure and all that. Okay, that's a fact. So don't blame it on the damn pig. But if you want to, you know, blame it on the pig. But like I said, yeah, night train. I'd rather die eating me a damn nice old ribs than smoking a pack of Newports every damn day, which is what we're doing over there. Yeah, but they, they're not going to do any research. They're going by what people tell them. They'll take one little bitty line out of that Bible Forget all the other contexts around it. See, it's an abomination to eat pork. Chickens eat worse than pork than pigs. A chicken will eat any damn thing too, by the way. But you're eating them damn chicken wings and chicken thighs and everything else. I want I got a news flash for everybody out here. The air is polluted, the water's polluted, and your food's polluted. Damn it, just enjoy whatever it is, because one of them going to get you, okay? Forget all that foolishness, guys. The air is polluted, the water is polluted, and the food is polluted. Okay, now I gave you the nitty-gritty. That's the truth, okay? One out of three of us is going to die from cancer, okay? So just put that in your pipe and smoke it and live your life, man. Don't worry about that. If somebody wants to have a damn pizza, pizza sandwich, let them have it. I don't give a damn. Yeah, yeah, they're all over tilapia and all this stuff. We don't know enough, guys. Pork is in every damn thing. Just like sugar's in every damn thing. Yeah, just all the crazy stuff, man. Yeah, he said night train with grape juice. We should drink it, man. Look, I was I was 14 years old when night train came out. And you know what the big deal was? If you could drink a pint by yourself. And we sit there and try to drink a pint of that rock gut stuff by yourself okay at 14 years old i was a drunk a long time man but nobody said anything about that but don't fool with that pork it's gonna kill you right sugar's killing more people than pork ever could sugar's in everything hey marlon alvarez thanks for that super chase Last time I flew to the Philippines, it was over 24 hours. I traveled from Houston, Texas, to Turkey, then the Philippines. What are guys clocking in? I'm, I usually fly out of Chicago, but I'm coming from Louisville now. So I got to ride a bus three hours, then catch a plane. It's usually like 17 and a half to 18 hours, depending. If I fly into, if I fly from, uh, Chicago to Hong Kong is 15 hours and then another two and a half hours to Cebu or an hour and a half to Manila. Either way it goes, man, it ain't much difference between, you know, then we ain't even talking about layover. I'm just talking about in the air. It's long, man. And if you go to like uh, Japan or Korea or something like that, it's around the same. But once you're up in the air for 16 hours, it's not much difference, man. You you could go with hell three or four more hours. Big Dog said high fructose corn syrup and other derivative bullshit are killing Americans. Yeah, but we're not worried about that because it doesn't say that in the Bible. 
It doesn't say God is a have fructose corn syrup is abomination against the Lord. Okay, if it said that, people would be telling you not to eat it, but they're not. You know, they, they got pancakes with extra syrup and all kind of crazy stuff. Yeah, mad dog, but nobody says the Thunderbird. It's so we uh, what was the that um Boone's farm? Remember that you didn't get no cheaper than that. He says it's better to fly out of Houston or Dallas. I don't know. There's some people on here that can tell you that. Okay, the, the great point. He said the most power a president has is, is the power to pardon. That's the linchpin. Yeah, you can. He said, stay well. We have Boone's farm. I just, I just said that. He said, damn, you know your cheap wines. Absolutely. We all do. I drink everything. But then as I, you know, as I graduated and I'm trying to be out here in all the fancy stuff when I lived in Cincinnati and I come back in the early 90s in America, I'm drinking the cognac and all that, right? By the time I checked, and this is the fact, 100%, when I checked myself into detox, May the 13th, 1998. I was drinking 211. And anybody knows what that is. If you know, you know. Uh, the last, I have a uh, 22 ounce of 211. That's the last thing I drank before I checked myself in the detox. That was the last drink I had. Yeah, Cisco. Man, y'all yeah, know, man. Hey, Jungle Man, Space Cowboy. I saw where you had a fight, man. Are you okay? That wasn't your face on the thumbnail, but you said some man jumped on you here. But I was telling Merlin, I said, look, guys, that's why I don't put that camera in people's face. Because they're like, man, why don't you walk around and show more women and this and that? I said, man, you can't do that over here. You know, come on over here. I'm not going to give you a peep show. Come over here and you can see all that yourself, but He's walking down Walking Street, filming these young kids, and some boy start fighting him, man. The camera, you know how you know when they're fighting, the camera's going all over the place. And he made a video about it. I don't know. He said the guy got locked up. But that's what you're dealing with when you stick the camera in people's face. Over here. Yeah, Cisco wasn't no joke. Yeah, Alize and all that stuff, St. Ads, all that crazy stuff. But see, I didn't realize till later on that they didn't sell that stuff. They only sold that stuff in the black neighborhood. When I'd be out, you know, after I stopped drinking and everything like that, and you go out into these rich neighborhoods, I, even in Appalachia, they didn't sell um Coke 45 and all that. They only sold that in the black neighborhood in America. It's crazy, but that's true. You don't believe me. That's what, but man, we was drinking some crazy stuff back then. No wonder all that crazy stuff was going on in our neighborhood. But yeah, guys, I got to get off here. Thank y'all for your super chats, your super stickers, all your memberships. I'm going to have my members only live show. I was going to have it yesterday. I didn't get sick, but I had diarrhea, man. And I believe I got it from... I, I'm going to go and put them on blast. Kenny Rogers, uh, because I don't want anybody else to get it. Yeah, this one, we normally eat, We started eating Kenny Rogers in Kagei and Oro. And that gave us... We, we had a great review for that play. Speaking of Spain, it wasn't a big play. It was small. So then we, where, where else do we eat? We call it, but the bigger the city, the worse it got. The family we get the Tabu, and it's a big place. I mean, you know, you got cats on the outside. And, you know, I had the solo beef, which is, you know, you get the roasted chicken, you get two sides, you get the little bitty piece of cornbread, the little bitty piece. 
but it's good. And man, I didn't walk. Well, I didn't walk a hundred feet. Man, stomach got the bubbling. I had to catch a damn taxi out of there quick. Okay, thank you, brother. Appreciate y'all, man. All your support. Take care, y'all. Stay safe. Stay out of trouble. Don't do nothing stupid. And for the dick police who's watching, I got on blue underwear today. 